everybody, and welcome back to the second episode of The Bear Pod. I'm your host. Once again, I'm back, Julian Johnson, a.k.a. Jules. Let's go. Today, we got a nice little slate of topics, but first of all, I just want to know, how are y'all doing today? Y'all doing well? Because I know I am. You know, it's been really nice outside lately. Like, above, like, 50 degrees. Nice, nice, nice. Like, you know, that spring feeling is it's really in the air. You know, it, it just really is. And I'm not going to lie. I might have to bring out the shorts soon. Like, I might have to stop wearing the pants, put the shorts on. You know, I was, yesterday, I was out hooping. You know, I was getting my little tween thing. No, I'm not a... I'm not a dribbler like that, but I am a hustler, rebounder, you know, defender type guy. You know, I always get my little buckets, you know what I'm saying, playing with the homies. You know, everybody needs a little break sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, (laughs) I hope you all are really do having like a great day and a great week. And, you know, got midterms around the corner as well. So, you know, make sure you get that rest in before, you know, it's crunch time, you know, it's time to get in that duffy, you know what I'm saying? But really enjoy the weather because... You know, we don't get this often a lot of times. But for real, though, to really get things started, I'm just going to ask you all another very simple question. Did it feel like Black History Month to you all in this past February? It is March 3rd today, 2022. And for me, I don't really know how I feel about Black History Month this past year. I mean, we had the bomb threats literally on the first day of the month for Morgan. And even going into the end of January, going into February, there were already a few more at HBCUs. Then we had the whole Ukraine situation, and God bless that whole situation out there. But, you know, a lot of other stuff happened in February, and, you know, just a lot. So it really didn't feel like a typical Black History Month to me. Uh, I felt like we got to shine in the spotlight, but maybe not as much as I feel that we've had in the past. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on one of my fellow Bear Pod members to come and talk on the issue as our subject matter expert. Yes, subject matter expert for this podcast. So hello, Antonio, and how you feeling, man? I feel great. Like you said, the weather's been uh, above average, but could be better. I mean, it's, it's March 3rd, so <laughs> it's not really supposed to be this hot. Shout out global warming. It needs to be fixed, though. Uh, but <clears throat> but. Yeah, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and everything? So, Antonio, man, uh, sophomore multimedia journalism is my major. I went around the uh, Morgan campus uh, last couple of days just trying to see how the people felt about Black History Month. Because, like you said earlier, it didn't really feel like Black History Month. And this month, more than others. And a lot of people said the same thing that you said. It did not feel like Black History Month. They didn't really feel in the spirit. They didn't feel like Morgan did... Uh, did enough to make them feel like it was Black History Month. All right, so let's take a listen real quick. I'm not prepared for these questions at all, but... Oh, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, again, Antonio, uh, who am I here with? Can you say your uh, name, uh, classification, and major? Um, my, name, my name is Kieran Griffiths, right? And um, my major is physics. I'm my freshman right now. My name is Brittany Gardner, and I'm a junior. My major is multi-platform production. All right, so my name is Guy Celia. I am a junior, and my major is multimedia journalism. Thank you. So Black History Month just passed, Mm -hmm. and I hear a lot of people say that I didn't feel like Black History Month. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? So I honestly definitely didn't feel like it was Black History Month. Like, compared to, like, when we were younger, like, you know, middle school, high school, it was such a big emphasis on it but like now it's just like now you just don't you don't really it doesn't feel like it did, did it feel like black history month to you mm, didn't, didn't really you know but then again i was mainly going to school so like i didn't really get to go outside because i was doing assignments but it didn't really feel like black history month if it felt like black history month yeah um i kind of disagree because I'm used to being around, um, I guess, environments where people tend to go all out for Black History Month in terms of like celebrating almost every day, even if it's like the smallest thing, like they'll celebrate a Black person per day or they'll celebrate like a street named after a Black person or they'll celebrate like someone's birthday who's 
it's black it just happened to be in february you know like there's always a celebration for a day in black history month do you think it's anything morgan state could have did to make it feel like more like black history month and i know we had like a few events here but they weren't as popular and i feel like they could have done better at like perhaps advertising it or just letting the student body um be a little bit more aware of it yeah like as a black institution like you know we're the national treasure i feel like we could have had like a little bit more i don't want to say like activities but like some more promotion of it like mm. you really didn't you didn't hear anything like oh like probably once like we had the um the guess who activity that they were doing on but like that was like probably the only thing that i heard of it wasn't like it wasn't pushed upon as like, hey, this is our month. We're a black institution. We need to prevail. Like, we need to do our best this month. Wait, did Morgan have black history events? All right. Um. <laughs> so how many of you actually, like, knew there was a Black History Month Spirit Week that final week of February? So, like, last, last week? Yeah, last week. So I knew it was a Black History Spirit Week, but I didn't really participate because of the days I really wanted to participate, like Tuesday, which was the day you could dress up as your favorite uh, historical figure in Black History Month. Yeah, that's a Black Celebrity Day. Celebrity day. Dress oh. as your favorite Black celebrity. That was Tuesday, February 22nd. I only had one class that day, and it was a Zoom class, and I had to go to work straight after, so I just couldn't really have fun on the days I wanted to. And on Wednesday, it was a do rag day, and yeah. I and I have you know, yeah, you know, I'm smooth press, so you know, we had the do rag day thing. It said it went pretty well, but I had class, so I wouldn't even be was able to participate during that time. Like a lot of these things, like I saw it, but I don't know. I just feel like me as a, I'm a really very very busy person, so like I didn't really participate in it that much. But I did see a lot of other people on campus that. You know, not, I'm not going to say that they aren't busy, but they be on campus and are more active in doing things than I can be currently. And I didn't really see them participating. So it's either they didn't know or they, they didn't care enough. So I, I but, you know, I don't it's hard to make that distinction at the end of the day, though. Yeah. But as I was as I was speaking with a lot of people, they said that um some of them knew it was a thing. Some of them didn't know. Some of them had no idea what was going on. But. I don't know. I, I maybe we could have did something else. Maybe on the weekend. I, I, maybe that's even worse. I don't know. But something that <laughs> not that, on the weekend. No. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. Some, something that would that everybody could be included in. But you know, you just gotta try next year and the year after that. I mean, so what do we do moving forward? Like, what does the university do moving forward to really, you know, make that more a big, bigger of a deal of a thing? You know, make it like a Morgan tradition at that point. I ain't think just that, just make it a Morgan tradition. <laughs> it's, just, I, it's just, you know, make it something that this is a big deal. You should be here. And again, there's going to be people who still don't show up because you can't make everybody show up. But if you make it more of a big deal, like at my high school, I had a Black History Assembly every year. That was a big deal every year. We had a Black History Assembly. It was the same, like we had a, a holiday assembly by the time of Christmas, Hanukkah, all those things. And it was just like we just made it a big deal every year. So I think we could do something like that for... Uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely would agree. Back in grade school, because I went to a, a mostly black school, there's only like two, three white kids in that thing. So, uh, you know, we always celebrated hard for Black History Month. We had like, I went to a Christian school, so like we had like assembly in the morning and stuff. So we sometimes we do stuff about Black History Month and we'll post things on the wall and all that different type of stuff. So it was it was really it was really nice. So uh, maybe I don't know, maybe we try to find different ways to do stuff like that moving forward. But either way, Black History Month, it was nice. There was a few different things on there that worked. The NBA had the HBCU uh, classic thing where Morgan did that. And we ended up losing the game, but I'm not going to lie, it was a fun game. Honestly, that was really cool, though, because I didn't know they did that. I don't know if this was the first year they did that, but it was really cool that they picked schools that are, uh, you know. First year, it's first year. It's, I don't know, it was really cool. Like, they picked Howard, and, you know, Howard is, like, the basic school. Every time they, every time uh, companies think of HBC, they, they think Howard. of Howard. <laughs> but besides that, it was cool that they invited Morgan there. Yeah, definitely. It definitely was. And hopefully moving forward, um, they choose a whole bunch of different HBCUs because uh, as we would like to say to a lot of people, Howard is not the only HBCU. Neither is just Hampton or Morehouse and all that stuff. Like, you know, we got good old Morgan, the illustrious Morgan State University. The national treasure, Morgan State University. <laughs> but yeah, so Black History Month, hopefully it gets better moving forward. And or maybe we just tripping. I don't know. Make sure you guys let us know. I 
I don't know if I've told y'all this before, but I used to be a creative writing secondary education major. Um, and if you don't know, that's in the College of you know Liberal Arts and all that stuff, where you know psychology and for some reason that's the only major I could think of at the moment. <laughs> but that used to be my major, and I recently changed my major to multimedia journalism. And it also used to be a minor in entrepreneurship, but I got rid of that. I changed it all to that in spring 2020. Probably the greatest decision of my life. And if you really think about it, I have a lot of friends that have changed their majors over the last three years that I've been here. I'm a junior now. So without further ado, we're going to get into a little segment that we like to call major management. So I'm going to be bringing on another member of the Bear Pod, my good friend, Kenya Capehart. How you doing, Kenya? I'm good. And yourself? I'm alive. That's great. I know, right? We love life. We love life. We yeah. really do. Like blood pumping and everything. Yeah, you know, you just feel the heart beating sometimes. <laughs> just stop and listen to it sometimes. Definitely, definitely. But you want to give them a quick intro about who you are, what you do? Like you said, I am a junior strategic communications major from Miami, Florida. Nice. All nice. the way from the dirty, 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 dirty south. Oh, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's really crazy. But can you tell the people, like, what major did you used to be? So the major that I used to be was a social work major. Oh, I'm a, tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> social work was a lot of work. It yeah. wasn't necessarily hard. It just having to care for people that are removed, your personal feelings from it, and actually, like, go deep into those people's lives and try to resolve certain issues. If you're a personal group person like I am, that's not the major for yourself because it's going to be hard to split that up and try to remove yourself from that situation. It's kind of like with music. Sometimes how people have distinguished like the music, the artist, the artist and the, the person. Mm -hmm. For like in theater, like, you know, like just because they play a certain character doesn't mean they're like that certain way. Yeah. But of course, on a far more grander scale when it comes to social work, because I have a few friends that I know in social work. Uh, shout out to my friend bossing it up and doing great things. Um, that I know she be she be stressed out by that type of stuff, along with a whole bunch of other people that I know that are really stressed out from specifically social work, but really just a lot of different majors. And, you know, that really is a main reason why a lot of people just switch majors because they're like, you know what? Like, I thought I wanted to do this, but now they're like, maybe this isn't for me. So what was that like specific moment that you was like, nah, nah, it's not for me? My specific moment, it actually happened very early. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my orientation class for social work and I felt it. And orientation is like the easiest class you can take in your major. How did I? I didn't even fail. I passed with a D, but that's failing in my eyes. So how do you get a D in orientation? And after that, I was like, yeah, no, I just cannot. <laughs> I just can't. So what's the message you end up changing? It was spring 2020, right when COVID happened. Oh, I changed spring 2021 to multimedia journalism. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had a really well, late start. I'm still meeting a whole bunch of the people in the building and everything. Yeah, that's crazy. Because when I changed my major, it was like a culture shock. Like, people were friendly over here. Like, everybody was like, wow, welcome to SUJC. Like, this is your major. This is where your classes are going to be. Like, it was just amazing for me. I changed during COVID. So, like, I just got greetings over Zoom. But they were still really nice. And because I, like, I changed my major because, like, honestly, I had a panic attack, like, in fall 2020. And going into the next semester, and I was like, yo, I don't know what I want to do in my life. And then I just, I was like, hey, I like entertaining. I'm a singer. I like acting. I like being in front of people. I like talking to people. I like connecting with people. I was like, what's the best thing to do? Communications. And that's specifically what? Journalism, but like, because I already write in. And I was like, wait, multimedia journalism, because I can do multiple different things. And then I ended up starting my podcast, the Versatility Podcast, and ended up doing a whole bunch of stuff because journalism and multimedia, that's all entertainment. And that's what I love to do. And if you want to do something, you just kind of got to go out and do it. You can't, if you have step your way to it, then you won't really do what you want to do. And that was definitely my issue, trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to do and make that happen for me. Like, even now, I still don't know what I want to do. I feel like now I'm more of on the right track, but it's just trying to figure it out and trying to maneuver. And like you, I love entertainment. I like to be creative. I like to be able to be creative in my workspace. So why SCOM specifically, though? Because I want to be a public relations director. 
oh. in the music industry. So now it's kind of that's what I wanted to do. Let me say that because <laughs> now it's kind of shifted to like social media management and mm -hmm. like uh, running people's Facebook pages, Instagram pages, Twitter pages, like creating those graphics that belong on those pages. And yeah, that's that's really what it kind of stemmed to now. I'm I'm more of like building on those gifts that I have in in that field. How did changing your major, did that set you back at all? Or because you kind of did it freshman year, it really didn't set you back? Because I did it at the end of freshman year, it didn't set me back at all. My shortcomings kind of set me back, which is why I'm a semester behind. But that's mm. a whole nother conversation. That's COVID? No. Oh, just other stuff? But like academic uh, issues. It's just that type of stuff sometimes. Yeah, like freshman year, I kind of, I ain't wild out, but I kind of wild, wild out a little bit. Listen, so. we all got our own little moments sometimes. Some mm -hmm. some people with mental health, some people just had a little too much fun. Some people have had a mixture of both. It's, it's <laughs> definitely a mixture of both. Like mental health and trying to balance that, being away from home definitely messed me up. So I didn't necessarily get pushed back because of changing my major, but you know, those personal shortcomings. Wow, no, that's really cool. Because I didn't even know you were from Florida, so that's actually very interesting. I didn't, I didn't get that vibe. I mean, maybe I don't know. I thought it was DC or something. I don't wow. know. Like, I'm not, I'm, just, I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'm just saying. I got you. People usually tell me they get like Philly vibes, and I never... everybody's not in their head in the room right now. So yeah, right. Like everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's... I never. Never even been to Philly. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> I've only been there one time. But also in terms of the setback thing, I've been kind of a little just a teensy bit setback. Uh, granted, they did use all of my English courses that I did take because I only did it for like that first semester of like really my, getting into my major. So I passed all those courses, but they use them as free electives. Mm. And my entrepreneurship class, like if, I mean minor, if I didn't take the classes for that. I'd be on track to graduate fall 2020. I mean, no, spring 2023. But now I'm on track for fall 2023 because, you know, you got to do the practicum internship and um, uh, senior capstone in three consecutive semesters. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not pressed, though, because it's still 2023. Even if it wasn't, I mean, I think a lot of people have to realize, and I hope everybody, I want everybody like, to really hear this, is the fact that you finish when you finish. And as long as you do finish, then who cares? Like, my brother, he's like, three years behind we're set to graduate the same year 2023 my older brother is was three grades ahead of me he, he's class of 2016 for high school i was class of 2019 for high school so you know it happens but guess what he's gonna get that dang degree and we, and, he go, and i'm gonna get mine too and we might end up having the same graduation day or something like that but yeah. at the end of the day we gonna get it done you know yeah. and people have to realize that college is not a race it's not a race go at your own pace like you don't have to, because society says you're supposed to finish in four years, you can finish in six and you'll still have the same degree as that person that finished in four years. So just Amen. take your time, like, take your time. I think the average is like four to five years though, mm -hmm. for college students. Yep. And that might actually affect dropout rates and stuff. I mean, not dropout rates, but graduation rates, because I think they do it based off like the four to five year thing instead of like actually like the um like when you graduate like when person someone in that class graduates we we'll have to look more into that but yeah we we'll definitely just, have to look more you know, into that but you know that's why it's called you know major management you know we're gonna be managing ourselves and managing y'all and maybe we should change the you know degree management mm -hmm. because we're trying to get yeah. them degree yep. you know yeah degree it's management, degree like management. you know something like that some some slight you know what i'm saying <laughs> but yeah so you know if y'all got any uh stories that y'all want to share about your majors you know come hit us up uh you hit us up at bear tv um or you can you know hit me up personally on my my ig jewels underscore is j-u-e-l-z underscore i-s and uh and you want to shout out your instagram y'all can you hit me up on my instagram at kenya.e k-e-n-y-a-a dot e that sounds like a lot right now and i don't think my brain can process that it, it definitely is a lot it's a lot Okay. But it's okay. As long as you know Somebody that it's gonna alive. get it. Somebody. Somebody? Shout out to that one person. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but thank y'all for listening to this segment and yeah. Well, we're back to music, everyone. <laughs> and moving forward, we're going to make this a reoccurring segment. 
So that's right. Tuning your bare ear. Get it? Bare, like, ear. Oh, you. Oh, <laughs> it, will, it will be here to stay. And I hope you get used to, you know, more puns like that. Because as long as I'm here, you'll definitely be getting more of that. So tune your bare ear. <laughs> I love it. Easier to listen to. <laughs> but yeah, so today we have a few topics on you know music and i'm going to bring on our subject matter expert for this segment cole height to talk a little about some interesting music matters what's good cole hey nothing much man how you feeling i'm feeling blessed and highly favored you know like the song blessed and highly favored okay. you know yeah you went to church hey, yeah Growing One up? time back in the day, a couple times. Oh, a couple times. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> but actually, I have a question, uh, Cole, before we before we get started. Um, yeah, go ahead. What was, like, your your favorite cartoon growing up? That is a hard question, but if I, make can it just quick. Re- make it quick. if I can just reach in from just my memory bank, I probably have to say Courage the Cowardly Dog. Okay, 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 okay. We'll get into why later, but I'm, I'm trying to ask, I'm going to start asking this to, like, Every single one of you guys that come on, and I'll tell you guys mine. I eh, it was probably yeah. We'll come back to it later. <laughs> but uh, what do you have uh, to tell us today, Cole? Well, you know, there's been a couple of um, developments in the music scene going on. First and foremost, um, I like to bring up the war on Drew music, and specifically New York Drew music that's happening right now. Um, the New York City uh, Mayor um, Eric Adams. He uh, called to remove some of the um, social media platforms, not social media platforms, the music off of some social media platforms because he was saying it's spreading violence throughout New York City. And they recently seen like an increase in crime and specifically gang related crimes. And Mm -hmm. he's trying to combat that with this method right here. And what exactly is the method? Um, Basically holding social media um, platforms accountable for the promotion of drill music and saying that they essentially are partly responsible for the violence that's happening because they are broadcasting it on such a um, big level. And he wants to basically find out and get to the center of the problem. Is it the social media that's making it a problem or is it just the the strife in the, in New York City, like the the poverty and stuff like that, that's making it circulate so fast. So then, my question is, like, does that mean that it's also tying back to like other cities too? Can you make that connection between other cities and stuff? Whether that's Baltimore, and even though y'all don't probably don't believe it, like Milwaukee has a, a lot of the same issues as well with that. So I understand that. And growing up, um, my parents weren't into that type of music, but they'd always be like, "Man, I don't listen to this, yada yada yada." But you know. It, it definitely is an issue, but at the same time, it's a form of expression. That's what music really is. Yeah. So, you know, what I know he ended up meeting with Fabio Foreign and B Love and Mino? 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 Mino to talk about it and stuff like that. And I was surprised by his reaction mm-hmm. that he had because I, I, I looked at the video that she sent and, you know, he was like, what did he say? He said, he said like they Fabio and all the rappers came at him like he was some old guy that just didn't know what he's talking about. He was like, "Whoa!" I didn't say I was like getting rid of you know drill music. He was like, "I'm like, I just want to find the source of the problem." Like what yeah, you just he said. Wants to sit down and have like a little kumbaya, if you will, <laughs> with some of the lead head figures. You feel me of this music genre and really figure out why things are happening and how could they prevent them. And much to that. Favi responded back with, I don't know if you heard this drop. He made this song with Kanye called City of Gods. And it was a New uh, York drill type of beat. Him and Alicia Keys was on it. Yeah, I saw that. And that was kind of like his answer to the mayor saying that drill music is violent and it only spreads negativity. He was trying to show the mayor like, no, drill music is a genre and it can include those violent subject matters. But it is also it can also be seen as positive and uplifting. Then I think one thing we need to do is see more of that. I yeah. think I think that's really what the issue with the mayor was saying. Because he said his mm-hmm. son, who 
Because his son works for Jay-Z, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like the Rock Nation office. Yeah, and he was like, well, when he heard it, he was like, bro, we got to do something about this. Mm-hmm. Which I totally get, because that's why I, at first, because I was raised in a very Christian household and stuff. Well, I ain't going to say very, as in like we were super, super strict, but it was pretty strict childhood. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't really allowed to listen to that type of music like that. I mean, I was allowed to, but it never popped up. And to me, it just seemed so foreign because I'm like, y'all talking about, you know, all those explicit things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any positivity. But then the more you dig deeper into it and you like listen and then like, because if you just hear one song that's like that, then you just assume all the rest are Mm -hmm. without when you really like go into it and really like listen to the different types of it, like you said, because it's a genre. Mm -hmm. Genres are versatile. Not all pop songs are about love and having fun. Some of them are about sadness and stuff like that. And I think what needs to be pushed out more is that type of stuff. Because I think the issue is the fact that those those drill stuff gets pushed out too much. Yeah, and much to that point. The murder stuff, yeah. (laughs) It's just what what people value at the end of the day. Because drill music is, quite frankly... um, violent sounding you know you know what i'm saying because Mm -hmm. it's reflecting the mentality of the people you know because when you see that reflected you shouldn't necessarily think all these people are awful people what i what i would think is wow they what are they going through up there that's making this just a regular thing that you can just express off the rip you Mm -hmm. know so i don't it doesn't it doesn't make me think something needs to change within the actual music something needs to change within like the the environment and the environment exactly yeah that gets to a whole bunch of other things that we ain't gonna talk about right now but then that kind of leads to the point of like how does your music shape who you are as a person because i said in the first episode about how like i listen to j cole her rod wave and uh, all fire uh trey songs as well and billy eilish people are very uh I say the black community is a little slept on Billie Eilish and Billie she very she's very fire. Like, I don't think people realize it. And you can even compare her music like that type of vibe to like mm-hmm. X and Juice because of like the way it's sad, but it can have like a hard, harder type of beat on it. I'm not comparing Billie Eilish to her. I'm just making like a, I guess you could say like just comparing small comparison. bits of it, like a comparison and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so like. I listen to that type of music because I like to have fun, but at the same time, I like things that make me think. Mm. So, like, what about, like, you? Like, what are some music and stuff, like, on your Spotify or whatever playlist and stuff like that? Well, just to say this as a disclaimer, I got a really bipolar playlist, so it'll be everything on there. But I'm kind of, like, in the same realm. I like lit, calm music. It's kind of like his is lit. It's kind of like the BPMs is up there. You're getting that tempo that you usually get from like a lit song, but then also you got the minor tones of like a sadder song. You dig what I'm saying? And it it blends well. It's very nice to listen to. Yeah. And as far as like stuff that's on the playlist, you know, I got a lot of I'm in the I'm into a lot of like Detroit music now, especially specifically like the Flint movement. I've been banging with them lately. And when it term when it comes to like the more on the side of like that calm lit music i don't know if you ever heard of the artist lucky with the eye at the end no it's fire no yeah it's like it's like that music where like you want to turn up but not really nice well that, that's really nice because yeah music and your identity it there, there's definitely a connection between the music that you play Most and the um you know and who you are as a person whether that if you, even if the music you play doesn't show who you are outwardly it definitely shows who you are inwardly and like the different thoughts and feelings that you have in general so you know why don't y'all let us know you know some of y'all music that y'all like to do you know again hit up the ig at bear tv msu uh hit up my ig at j-u-e-l-z underscore i-s and um you can shout out yours if you want or uh yeah got no social media i don't know what it is but zero dark 30 yeah man it it makes (laughs) things it, it, it simplifies things but not really you know, it's a mixture of both because in this day and age, it's kind of like you got it to. It becomes necessary that you have those. Yeah, that definitely put a pin in that for another conversation as well. Yeah. But appreciate y'all for listening to this segment. And yeah. All right. And uh, without further ado, welcome back to the Bear Pot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm literally just a clown. Don't, don't even mind me. <laughs> but. Uh, here's our last uh, segment of the pod. 
Cave Conversations. And so, here is our subject matter expert. Please give a warm welcome to Ronica Edwards. Thank you. Oh, wow. I, I haven't gotten an applause like that in a while. Thank oh, you so wow. much. No problem. Um, I yeah. try. I am a senior. I'm a multi-platform production major here at the lovely Morgan State University, and I'm very happy to be with you today. Thank you. That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Like, make sure you use that on, like, your biography and everything. Like, do the, the, the whole autobiography thing, too. Yeah. You know, it just, it'll all yeah. work I'm together. i put it on my website. Too. Yeah, but actually, I have a question with you. I started with Cole, and I want to I wanna ask you as well. Okay. Um, I want to ask everybody who comes on. So, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Okay. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to say uh I used to watch a lot of I used to watch a lot of shows though because I watched like Danny Phantom a lot okay, you gotta you gotta narrow it down we ain't got a whole okay, bunch of time Spongebob here. Spongebob, I'll Spongebob. Say Spongebob. Yeah. that's a, either either that or Danny Phantom that's a safe answer but Danny Phantom um that's, that that's one of mine uh, I'm not t- I didn't tell them what mine was yet we're gonna I think we'll work I don't know I feel like your something. mask might might give some Marvel stuff to what and kind of superheroes guy. Does anime count? No, that doesn't count. Anime, anime is not cartoon. Ooh, my fault. I tweet. My fault. Yeah. <laughs> but this might make people mad. Yeah, no, I'm tripping because I'd be one of those people who'd be mad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, without further ado, what, what do you have for us today? So I'm sure most of you have a TikTok or at least have seen some TikToks before. And you know about the whole trend, the Baltimore accent thing. Everybody <laughs> thinks that Baltimore talks a little crazy. So, you know. When I first got to Baltimore, it was definitely something to get used to. It was something to get used to. But for me, I think the biggest thing I had to get used to was driving in Baltimore. That took a lot. What was it for you? For here? Yeah. I mean, at first I didn't have a car. But when I did have a car here in my junior year, which is this year, this school year, it, driving is god awful. But also the uh, the atmosphere. My allergies are bad. So, like, when I change, like, I remember one day I'm like... A cut, like it was it was really bad it, it was like i was down bad and i was also eating bad too because i'm a freshman right. you know like most right. freshmen do and i would get sick sometimes on the weekends like i missed uh a few of the 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 football games because i was just i was done like i was literally yeah. done but the atmosphere and the and the parking for real though the parking i'm scared to park on the street in baltimore I that's all i said parking to parking tra- tra- slash traffic yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the traffic and it's like it's not even the traffic so much it's just like i mean the traffic's bad but you gotta also deal with people just walking in the middle of the street <laughs> that was something to get used to you gotta deal with the potholes which are a whole nother game people just stopping in the middle of the street it's it's a battle out there no it's definitely bad especially when you get downtown and people put the hazards on and somebody's trying to park yes. i.e that's me that's me trying to park. you're that guy <laughs> you're the guy I'm that, that holds guy trying everybody to fit up into the spot. you know like because I, I feel like i'm a very good parallel parker well, that's what everyone. Says. I say I'm a good parallel parker. I ain't gonna say very good. I'm good. I'm yeah. decent, and I get in the spot. But you know, sometimes sometimes yeah. it take you a few tries to pull out, <laughs> then pull back. Yeah, it's just right. like, Ey. see what happens to me. I just kind of give up and just ride rack around and hope nobody saw me. <laughs> I'm dead. But actually, I want to tackle back to that point you were talking about, like the the accents and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like I know that was for me. Like that was that was yeah. crazy when I got here. I, I was like, yo, yeah. why are you? I'm like, it's two. Not to you. I'm like, what do you like? Why are you speaking like yeah. that? And it's funny because it's like when your professors are in this like educational setting and they're still like, you know, when these people came to you, America, and you're just like, I cannot take this serious. If, I mean, uh, disclaimer I'm not trying to make fun of you guys right now, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now. But it's just you, when you coming from Milwaukee for me, granted, people in Milwaukee, some people, they definitely do be talking mush mouth and stuff like that. And also another thing, Milwaukee's pretty black. Uh, just want to say that again. I, I probably said it before, but it's pretty black where I'm from. So I, please, let's not do the. Let them know. Yeah, let's let's not do that. Okay, but you know, like it, it was just weird for me to see that coming here because it was like what, like what? Yeah, and it, especially for me because it's like I grew up about maybe 45 minutes an hour away, but it's it's a complete in the same state. I've lived in Maryland most of my life, but I have never heard anything like that before. Wow, so you didn't even hear that? In- no. Wow. I did not know. I until oh, not until crazy. I got older. No, that's that's really crazy. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I didn't you would yeah. think you would see a little bit more. Cause see, I grew up in DC and so the accent there is very different. Very okay. different. All right. DC slash PG County or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah, I wanna make sure accent. I'm getting 
all my right. stuff right because I know Milwaukee people get mad. Boy. Whoa. It's a lot. It's a lot different over <laughs> First here. First of all, I'm a the man. big city. I'm a man. Okay, I'm sorry, Thank Mr. You. Milwaukee man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, get get an M on your chest? Uh, No. <laughs> not at all. I'm not doing that. That's that's crazy. You know what? I think my uncle was trying to do something. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not even gonna bring that up. I'm not even gonna bring that up. But um, I do want to talk about how like um, uh, when you get to HBCU, like it's like, I think you kind of saw it here. Like, there's so many different ways to be like black, mm-hmm. and like your perception of what black people are really like changes Definitely. when you go to HBCU because. There are no one of other race that of, you know, a prominent population of them. So it's just like, oh, I see a bit of everybody. But usually how it would be separated by races is separated right. by like really just personality. and stuff. Right. Like you have like your theater kids, you have your stylish kids, you have the rappers, you have the opera singers. And there's like so many different faces to what it means to be black at HBCU. There's the kid from Milwaukee. There's the kid from, you know. Tennessee and then there's somebody who's from Baltimore City Cali. and yeah like yeah I know people who come from all over the place and so it's cool to be able to just have people that can tell you about different parts of the world and different spaces and you guys can all kind of learn from each other and be diverse even though people like to say HBCUs aren't diverse I think it's a very diverse place it's very diverse like but even like Howard is one of the more like diverse ones and in, in to come to like Mm-hmm. Uh, ethnicity and stuff mm-hmm. compared to other HBCUs, but that's because they're one of the most prominent. So of right. course it's gonna they're gonna draw more interest from in multiple different areas. But Morgan is slowly like I see more people of other ethnicities like every year. The more mm-hmm. I'm here, and a lot of that, you know, it's really because HBCUs are starting to get more of a spotlight. And again, like you said, diversity is really it. <laughs> diversity diversifies. No, diversity is different depending on what you mean by it, because it can mean ethnicities, but diversity can also mean like the way, like you're diverse as a person, you have multiple right. personalities, you have multiple like hats that you wear, right. and you have different talents. So like, it, I, I, hey, I love my H in front of my D, my D, my D in front of my C. I've done that before, but you know, it's just, it's it's really a great time at HBCU. It for is. Um, this was definitely a good choice for me. Great choice. Life-changing choice for me. Absolutely. Life-changing? I think so, definitely. Okay, definitely, definitely. I don't even want to say think. I know so. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm confident Pro- with that. Proclaim that. I know so. She knows so. But yeah, thank you, Ronica, for you know the little conversation, the thanks. cave conversation. Yeah, thanks for coming right. in the cave. Exactly, coming in the cave and you know having a nice little conversation. Mm-hmm. And a toasty uh, in here. <laughs> <laughs> definitely make sure y'all let us know at MSU Bear TV and uh you know my ig j-u-e-l-z underscore i-s and you have one you want to shout out yeah saint amethyst like the crystal s-a-i-n-t-a-m-e-t-h-y-s-t nice like amethyst from uh steven universe yeah see i'm, see, I'm here yeah, with the cartoon right, yep, stuff yep. you, know, you got to do the references Ooh, see, that's my favorite <laughs> adult cartoon <laughs> yeah thank y'all for listening and uh again <laughs> yeah So, yeah, thank you all so much for listening to the second episode of The Bear Pod. And, you know, again, we hope to just entertain you more and 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 bring on more people so you can meet new people, hear their thoughts on different things, see their reporting skills and and everything moving forward. Because this is the team here at The Bear Pod, and that's why I love doing this. So until next time, and, you know, midterms are coming up. Well, actually... I think by the time this release, midterms might not even be, midterms might be done. So I wish you all the best with just school in general, because I know I am uh, going through it a bit here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, God bless and uh, best of wishes for everything moving forward. And until next time, peace.